This is a three color LED. It's uh, connected to the ground on the minus. And we have three colors, red, green and blue. And we connect this on the board to a nine, 10 and 11. If we write an analog signal to the red LED, then it will burn red. If we write an analog signal to the red one, and we write an analog signal to the green one, then we will have a mixed color. So I went to uh, this website, and they have a color chart. And for example, if I want the, to shine the LED on a bright purple color like this, I have to to, to analog right to the red pin, a value of 255. I have to write to the green pin, a value of 51. And I have to write to the blue pin, a value of 153. And you see, you can pick the color you like. And as you can see over here, we have a combination of 256 times 256 times 256. And that gives us a color mix of 60,700,000 something colors. And uh, this is how it, it is set up on the board. The three color LED over here, connected to the ground. Uh, the red has a NITA resistor with a 180 ohm value. And the red wire goes in pin number 9. The green one and the blue one need a resistor with a value of 100. And they connect it in 10 and 11. And I have a, a button connected to the ground and connected to pin number 2, which is uh, interrupt 0. Red pin is 9, blue pin is 11 and the green pin is number 10. So, and this is uh, inside the compiler. Over here we set up uh, the pins. And this one is uh, coming back inside the, the loop. Here uh, we define the, the pins to outputs. Here we set up the, the interrupt. If you don't know what an interrupt is, uh, watch the video over here. And we set up the monitor. In the for loop we check if k is equals to zero. And if it's zero, it's, it starts the function traffic light. So what I did in this code, I made a traffic light. With this we only need one LED to display all the colors. Instead of three lights, that's how uh, the, the government can save money. I made a, a function red, it delayed it for three seconds. So, and then we clean the LED. And that's because I found out if you are displaying red, orange, green, it will mix up the, the, the colors after a while. The, they are fading in each other. So what I did is made a function for red, and then it's three, three seconds red, and then it cleans it, and this is how clean it looks like. We write to the pins a value of zero with a delay of one millisecond. And that's enough to have the nice bright colors. Uh, this is how uh, we display the red color. We, it's very simple. On pin 11 we write a value of 255. Green the same. And the orange we write three colors. And I played a little bit with this and this is how I get the orange color. My camera doesn't catch the colors very nice, but in real life you see the it's pretty good. Then we have a button. Imagine you are uh, the mayor of our town and you have a nice traffic light, but you know you see all the people are boring. So you have somewhere a secret button and if you press the button then uh, the traffic light uh, starts partying. So 
what I did is if you press the button, it starts an interrupt. That's defined over here. So if you uh, start, the, if you press the button, it starts a function button. Inside the button, it checks the or k has a value of one, or the k has the value of zero. And we set it up with in the beginning, in over here. K is zero. So if the program is running, then it in the loop it checks or k is is zero. And then it starts the traffic light. And k stay zero until we interrupt it. And on the moment we interrupt it, it's reading here or k is zero. And if then it turns k to one and it writes down in the monitor party time, then it is going back to the loop again. Here, and then it reads is k zero? No, because we just just because the interrupt just changed it to one. So it starts party. What happened in the party is it's it's mixing all the colors all the time. So you get a, a, a party thing. And if you press the button again, you got the interrupt sees it, it's one. So it changes it to zero which give us, gives us back the traffic lights function.